God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but have eternal life. Jesus loved this world so much he willingly died on the cross for each and every one of us. Dear brothers and sisters, do you remember when was the last time you have really looked at the crucifix or a picture of Jesus hanging on the cross? If not, this is the time. You're all staying home, joining with us in live stream. Look at the crucifix, close, intently. There's a person hanging on the cross. His body covered with blood. He was bruised, he was beaten, he was spanked, and he was scourged. And he has a crown of thorns on his head, a piercing, sharp crown of thorns. Above all, he is hanging on cross, just supporting on three huge nails. Historians say the nails are almost one foot, that big nails. The whole body of Jesus was hanging on the cross. As we heard in today's first reading from the book of Isaiah, it says he was so marred, he was so disfigured, he doesn't even look like a human being. I remember while growing in my home parish, on the right side of the church, we have a Calvary scene. The image of crucifix, a big one, probably 10 foot. And on either side, Mother Mary and John the, Bap John the Apostle looking at Jesus. And we have a custom in our place, after mass, all would come and stand there they would pray one Our Father and three Hail Marys. And I still remember every time I come there to pray, I look at the inscription at the, at the bottom of the crucifix. There's two simple sentences. He took your place. He died for you. Every time I read, you know, I really get very emotional. He took my place. He died for me. Every time we look at the crucifix, this should be the thought that we should get in our mind. He took our place. He died for us. Such a painful, horrible death. We can't even imagine what dying on a cross means these days. And there's a reason church very wisely invites all of us this Good Friday to spend some time in prayer, to reflect and meditate on the cross. And for us today, I thought I would share with you three situations or three instances that happened on the last day of Jesus' life. The passion of Christ began in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus knew that soon he is going to die. Die on a cross, a humiliating death, torture, pain. And that's the reason he looks at his father and says, Father, let this cup pass for me, but not my will, your will. He is in agony, pain. I'm sure you might have seen people crucified during his time of life. 
In this painful situation, here comes a disciple, Judas Iscariot, who lived with Jesus for three years. He ate with him. He traveled with him. He has seen Jesus performing miracles and teaching. Here comes. He comes and kisses Jesus. And we all know kiss is a sign of love. But here this person wants to kill Jesus with a kiss. All the disciples ran away from Jesus. He was all by himself. And even Peter denied Jesus three times. The whole night he has been taken to different places, questioned. The guards blindfolded Jesus, struck him on the head, prophesied who hit you. People humiliated Jesus and he was scorched. And I'm sure we all remember the scene from the Passion, Passion of Christ. How horrible that is. How painful that is. And the second situation starts in front of Pilate. There were chief priests, priests, and so many other people. And we heard in today's gospel reading, they were all shouting, crucify him, crucify him. And every time I, I hear this gospel, the question that comes to my mind is this, why? Why should Jesus be crucified? For bringing God's love? For giving sight to the blind? For healing the lame? For healing the leper? Where are all these, all these people when Jesus was unjustly judged what are these people doing? Are they also ran away from Jesus or quietly observing Jesus being condemned? Where are the 5,000 men who miraculously ate five loaves of bread and two fish multiplied? Was not even one person courageous enough to stand by Jesus? Why? Where are these people? He was continued to be tortured. He was continued to be humiliated. But Jesus kept calm because he loves us. And the third interesting situation here, brothers and sisters, Jesus is on the cross. The pain of the, pain of the cross is so unbearable. Your nerves, it seems when someone is hanging on the cross, the nerves from your shoulders would break off. The bones would crush. And Jesus standing on one nail, both the feet supported. And those days, people who were crucified or hanging on the cross, uncontrollable pain. They use all sorts of bad words curse on the soldiers and people around. And it seems soldiers will climb up the cross, cut the tongue of people crucified. But whereas, look at Jesus. It sounds so strange. Is he on the cross or on, on the throne? This, it looks as if Jesus is sitting on a throne and giving blessings to people even from the cross. When he looked at all the people crucifying him, killing him, he looks at his father and prays, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. How loving Jesus should be to pray for the people who persecuted him, who humiliated him, and who wanted to kill him. Jesus loved this world so much. And then there's a person crucified next to him and says, Jesus, remember me in your kingdom. He just asked, remember me in your kingdom. 
But Jesus blesses him more than that. He says, not just remembering, you are going to be with me today in paradise. And then he looks at Mary, his mother, and says, woman, behold your son. And the only disciple that was standing at the foot of the cross, he was given to Mary, his mother, that way. The whole church is given to Mary, and we all have Mary as our mother, the best gift we could receive. We can call Mary, the mother of Jesus, as our mother, as my mother. And then he looks at Mary and says, Behold your son. And once he has seen that everything has been done, he says, it is finished. It is not a cry of disappointment. It's a cry of a victory. It's like a warrior. After defeating the enemy, they shout, yes, we are victorious. And that is one of the reasons why we call this a Good Friday. Because Jesus has defeated death. As we read in St. Paul's letter to Corinthians, O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? So Jesus at the end, he knew everything for which he has come has been fulfilled. It is finished, it is completed. Mission completed. Since he died, our sins are forgiven. Since he died on the cross, the gates of heaven were open for all, for all of us. Since he died, we call God Abba, Father. Since he died, we live forever. We receive eternal life. So dear brothers and sisters, at the end of Jesus' life, he said, probably shouted, it is finished, I have completed, I am ready to go back to my father's house. And the last sentence he speaks, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. No one has killed Jesus, no one can kill Jesus. Jesus died of his own free choice. In John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 18, we read, Jesus himself saying, no one can take my life away from me. I lay down on my own free will. And he says, I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it back. Dear brothers and sisters, Jesus loved this world so much. Jesus loved me so much. Jesus loved you so much. That's the reason he has freely given up his life. He has freely shed his blood for all of us on the cross. And he won victory and eternal life for all of us. So dear brothers and sisters, today, if we, if we would look at the crucifix, the painful death of Jesus, and if you look at him and say, Jesus, why did you choose such a painful death? He would say, my son, my daughter, I love you. I love you so much. I love you immeasurably. And that's the reason I have taken up this path. And today, as we meditate this Good Friday, we need to pray that we be worthy of receiving that love. God has been loving us so much, and we should make ourselves worthy of receiving that love. And since God has loved us, let's ask him to bless us and to help us that we might love God in others, just as he loved us.
because that's the only commandment Jesus gave on the Last Supper. Love your neighbor as I have loved you. Crucifix tells us how Jesus loved us, and we should learn from him and love God in others.